Are you baking or getting bread and having quality issues? Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Ask Dr. Lin. It's during these videos that I take a deep dive into the questions that come to us on our emails, website, and social media pages. How is all this advice free to you? Well, through sponsorships, of course. This video is brought to you by our sponsor, Redding Thermal and their industry-exclusive Scorpion 2 Digital Humidity Sensor. This breakthrough new design provides bakers with an easy, accurate, and reliable way to measure the absolute moisture through the baking process. The sensor produces a profile of air temperature, dew point temperature, and percentage moisture by volume, all used to adjust the amount of steam injection and its extraction. See more at readingthermal.com today. Hey, if you like what you hear today, smash that like button and subscribe to this channel so that we can continue to produce relevant video content for Bakerpedia. And if you need more information on a particular topic, go to bakerpedia.com and bakerpedia it. In today's episode, we will focus on organic bread. Why? Well, because organic means clean label, and with clean label comes the difficulty of high-speed processing due to the delicate dough. Therefore, a lot of the issues you see in organic bread have similarities to clean label doughs. So let's hit the issues! Emulsifiers like SSL and Datum have traditionally been used to help strengthen the dough in high-pressure environments. Its use allows bakers to deal with the dough pumps and dough dividers, and to provide a fine, consistent crumb that can slice well. Now, there are enzyme solutions for this replacement, so just reach out to your ingredient provider. However, if you're still experiencing replacement issues, here are some tips to go over. Have you checked your flour quality? Great! If you haven't thought about this, it's a good time to check in with your organic flour supplier and get each load of your flour tested for consistency. A hard red spring winter wheat blend with a 12% protein would be a great place to start. Make sure you check the certificate of analysis for every pallet, super sack, or truck load that unloads into your silos. This is to make sure that you get the right quality every time. Don't know what your COAs should look like? Check out our topic on flower quality and learn more about the basic characteristics of a COA like moisture, ash, and protein and understand how to measure it. Next, have you checked out aged flour? The aging of flour naturally oxidizes it, making it stronger and improving its water absorption levels. Aged flour also reduces the need for emulsifiers. If you've just upgraded from sacks of flour to super sacks of flour, then you might have to increase your usage of enzyme conditioners. Super sacks or silo flour are sometimes only aged for a week or less, while sacks of flour can age for many months. This is going to be the biggest difference that you will experience as you upgrade your organic flour systems. The third tip would be to increase fermentation. Why is fermentation helpful? Well, Yeast produces enzymes during fermentation on top of producing gas and changing the acidity of the dough. Together with a lower pH, these enzymes help hydrate the dough and make it flexible for you. You can increase your fermentation through introducing a sponge in dough, sourdough techniques, or by introducing a flour brew. Go to this page to learn more about the in-depth function of fermentation and how this natural method can replace the functions of SSL and datum. Okay. 
We all know that steam injection provides that gloss to the surface of the crust. So yes, you can increase the length and intensity of steam to cook and gelatinize the starch on top of the bun to give it a better shine. If an organic egg wash or egg wash substitute cannot be obtained, then this would be your best option on obtaining a nice glass. Remember, you want steam and high humidity only at the beginning of the baking process. And remember, the more humidity you put in the oven, the more energy you need to use to drive it out in the other zones. By increasing the bake out of your bread, Check to see if you're reaching at least 80% of your baking time above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Most likely, you're not. Use the Scorpion 2 to determine where you are in your bake out. If you reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit at 90% of your bake time, use the Scorpion 2 to adjust your oven zones so that you can bring that down to 80% or sooner. Remember, the more bake out you give the bread, especially in the 75 to 80% zone, the more moisture you can drive out. And the less bread will stick to the slicer blades. If you need to understand more about the bake in your process, the Reading Thermal 2 digital humidity sensor also reports single point temperatures throughout the baking process. This versatile smart sensor also has two thermocouples inputs for core probes. Full width air velocity and temperature measurement sensor attachments are also available to plug into the main Scorpion 2 system. Too much extraction or an over dry bake chamber will result in the top of the crown checking, blistering or cracking. It is important to run your humidity sensor through to understand the optimal conditions for humidity during a regular bake. Therefore, when product with these problems arises, pull out your humidity sensor data to compare. Make sure that the current and optimal readings are similar. If it's not, then you're pulling out way too much moisture. So readjust your exhaust fans and dampers to pull out less water based on your Scorpion 2 readings. If you have too much moisture in the baking chamber, you are going to delay the kill step. This will give you a larger oven spring and a thicker crust. So increase the exhaust fans and open the dampers in the oven to get more moisture out. And you can also use a Scorpion 2 to optimize this as well. The only difference I can point my finger to is the use of cultured wheat versus calcium propionate. As we know, the latter works very effectively and you may need three times more cultured wheat to do the work of its CalPro counterpart. In order for cultured wheat to be really effective, you need to be extra clean. So sanitize your area well. It would also be helpful if you can pull out as much moisture in the oven as you can. This may be the difference between the bake of an organic versus a conventional product. The ability to pull out more moisture to lower water activity the longer the organic product will last without mold. Humectants like salt or sugar reduces water activity of food products. To learn more about water activity, go to this page. You can reduce water activity by not adding too much water to your system or by staying longer in the bake out zone, as indicated by the Scorpion 2. You can also use humectants, but proteins and fats are not humectants and will not reduce the water activity of your bread.
Mineral oil is a chemical substance derived from crude oil and should not be used for bread manufacturing, organic or not. A solution is to reduce hydration and the temperature of the final dough to 76 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. If this still does not work, look into the type of dough conditioners that you are using. You can also dry the dough with more oxidizers like ascorbic acid and enzymes like glucose oxidase. Lastly, look into changing the dough divider belts. You may be surprised. Yes, it's possible to cool down organic bread quickly using refrigeration, but don't overdo it. It is crucial to use proper airflow for the cooling process. A good tip would be to use a Scorpion 2 to ensure that the internal temperatures of the bread reaches 90 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and to slice and package it immediately to avoid accelerated staling. A better way to quicken cooling would be to use vacuum cooling technology. The Scorpion 2 measures temperature and air velocity down to negative 50 degrees Celsius. This is to withstand freezers for Parbic products. It is suggested for you to use a 5 to 10 channel probe interface for these processes. This is so that you can track how quickly product internal temperatures equilibrate with their baking or cooling processes, or how they relate to air velocity to maximize throughput. All right, bakers, that's all for this episode. If you have more bread problems, let's solve it together on LinkedIn or Facebook. Look us up there. We are listed as baking industry professionals. Come join us on these peer-to-peer -peer discussion forums. Sometimes I do chip in, but mostly it's peer mentoring. Good luck in baking awesome organic breads. Till the next time, bakers, bye. And thank you, Reading Thermal, for sponsoring this episode. <laughs>